This video is going to be covering the stroke window for Adobe Illustrator, and it's shown right here on my screen. And while it's focused on people that are a bit newer to Illustrator, perhaps, and haven't used the stroke window a lot, I'll be going over this in fairly decent depth. So maybe even if you're a more experienced user of Illustrator, you'll find some use out of this. So first up here, we'll be opening the stroke window in case you don't have it opened up. And to do that is pretty easy. It's under window. And then sort of near the bottom here, there's stroke. So just make sure that is opened up on your screen. And if you look at my stroke window, it might look different than your stroke window because by default, it typically just shows the stroke weight, which is only really a very small part of what the stroke window is capable of doing. So to make that expand open, you just wanna go to the menu in the upper right hand corner of the window itself. It looks like four lines with a down arrow. Go ahead and click that and then show options. And then you'll see the full set of options that the window offers and actually the really cool parts about what the stroke window can do. And also very quickly, in case you don't know how to add a stroke to an item, I'll just draw a rectangle right here by selecting that from my toolbar. There's a fill option that is totally covered in, so there is no missing section in the center. But if you click on the other one, that looks like a square with a square missing in the middle. That is the fill. Just double click on that when it's in the front, and then you can go ahead and select a custom color for your stroke. So you can see that it added it right on top of this one right here. So I'll make this weight a little bit bigger so you can see that. So that's how you add in a stroke, just in case you didn't know how to do that. But first up here, we'll focus on all the different options and I'll kind of go over what these mean. So right here we have just a straight up line. So no fills applied, it's just a black stroke. And changing the weight is probably the most common thing that people use the stroke window for. So this one is 18 point, but I can of course just hit this down arrow and select a different weight that's preset here. So as little as 0.25 point, which makes this a really thin line. And also whenever you're working with the stroke window, make sure the thing that you want to change is selected. Otherwise you'll make changes in the window and nothing will happen and you might find yourself asking why. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the drop down menu, you can just highlight over the number you want to change, type in your own number. So let's say 20 point and then hit enter and that'll go ahead and apply it to whatever you had selected. So next up here are two kind of cool options and they are cap and then corner. So for cap, the default type of cap, which applies to lines, not closed objects like a box right here, that's where corner will come in handy. But the default one is called a butt cap. So that's basically just a straight line vertically and that is on the ends of the points. So I'll zoom in a little bit closer here so you can see that there's a nice and straight line on the end of that point. The second one is called a round cap. So it looks a bit more like a pencil druid or a pen druid, something like that. So it goes ahead and makes a perfect half circle at the end of each of the left and the right sides of this line right here. So that's useful if you want something that looks a bit more rounded, not quite as harsh as a straight up line with a perfect vertical end to it. And the third option here is called projecting cap. So while the butt cap here puts that cap on the absolute end of the point, as you can see right here, here's the end of the point and that edge is directly on it. If you use the projecting cap, it goes ahead and extends that a little bit so it doesn't exactly end on the end of your point, which I've never personally really used the projecting cap, but in case you run into a situation where you want this to extend a little bit further, you can go ahead and use that. But for me, I basically always use either the round cap or the butt cap. And as far as the corner option goes, I drew the square right here to kind of show that off. So I'll zoom in a little bit closer. The default end on a corner is called a miter join. So that just joins the two points at an angle. And that angle will change kind of depending on how the two points intersect each other. The second one is just like on the cap option is called a round join. So so it'll round all four of these corners, which can be nice if you want a little bit softer feel. And the third one is called a bevel join. So it makes the join right there basically a 45 degree angle, which is kind of a cool stylistic effect if you want something that looks this way. It's a really fast way to make that look. For me, if I'm doing something that has a bit more of an industrial look, I kind of like using the bevel join because it gives things a bit more of a harsher industrial look to it. And below that we have a line stroke. So a line stroke is basically how you want the stroke to align to the path that the stroke is applied to. So by default, the align stroke is defaulted on the center. So it is equidistant on both the top and the bottom or the left and the right, whichever the case might be for where that path is aligned, but the stroke will project perfectly on each side. The second option here is a line stroke to inside. So in this case, it puts the stroke only on the inside of the line. So in case you want it to look like that. If you have a case where you want the stroke to be perfectly inside of whatever shape you drew, then this is the option that you want to take. And the last option here, a line stroke to the outside is basically the opposite of that. So it pushes the stroke completely outside of the object or path that you have selected. And I find that the align stroke to outside is most helpful on stuff like type, where perhaps if you have a thicker stroke and it takes up too much of the insides letters, they can start to look kind of funky, where if you use a line stroke to the outside of a letter, then it doesn't overlap the interior 
of a letter and it can really help visibility a little bit if that is a particular issue with the letters you're working with or if you're using a really thick stroke. So for example, I'll just quickly type out the letter A right here and make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll just go ahead and make it a white fill by double clicking on the fill there. And then I'll go ahead and just give this a black stroke. So right here we have a black stroke day and I'll make this a pretty thick stroke to kind of demonstrate that problem where if it is on the default selection of a line stroke to center, it really overlaps the interior a whole bunch. In this case, I'm actually gonna have to right click on this and create outlines so that it outlines this shape. So then I can go ahead and use the align stroke to select the outside. So you can see that it's much easier now to tell that this is an A with the stroke on the outside where previously where it was on the inside, it looked like a real mess and is not something that you generally want to do. So that's why you would go in there and perhaps use that one. And like I had to do on this one, like I showed, if you're using live type, the line stroke can only be done aligning to the center, but if you just right click on that type and create outlines, then you can go ahead and change that to either one of these three different options as you see fit. So now we also have a bunch of different dashed lines shown right here. So I can go ahead and show off the dashed line option. So when you have a stroke selected, you can have a little checkbox here that says dashed line. So I can turn that on and off by hitting this checkbox right here. So when I have that turned off, there's no dash. When I turn it on, the dash line now appears. And then the options here are dash, gap, and that's three times. So basically you can set three different variations of the dash lengths that you see. So that is what dash is for. And gap is the amount of distance you want in between each dash. So right here, this is set to 15 points as far as the length of each one of these lines. And then the gap between them is also 15 points. So if I make the dash something like 25 points and then hit enter here, you can tell the dashes became longer, but the space between them looks the same. And if you're wondering why the points on the end are not as long as these ones, it's because there's a couple options to the right here. So there's this option that's currently selected that basically says aligns dashes to corners and path ends and adjusts to fit. So that'll make it so that the dash is always perfectly on the end points, and then it'll be basically equidistant to the left and the right of that point. So basically, if you took this left one and right one and added them up together, you would get the same length as this one right here. Or if I select the other option, it won't align it so that the last point is perfectly on the edge points of this right here. So it'll kind of move this around a little bit as it sees fit to do so. In this case, it lined up super well, but I'll make this just a little bit longer here. So you can kind of see that in this case, if I pull this off to the side, the dash doesn't end on the perfect end point. There's a little bit of blank space right here that you might not want. And in cases where you don't want that additional space where you're doing something that needs to be a little bit more pixel perfect, you can select this option on the right, which will make the end ones shorter perhaps than they would normally be, but they will at least be even on both the left and the right side, which can be pretty helpful. And also just to show that you can apply different options to these, these dashes have a rounded cap so the cap point is what we use on a straight line that isn't connected into something like a box. So I just selected the round cap on this one to give us a bit more of almost a sewn thread look. So if you're trying to replicate something like sewing lines, using the round cap is a really easy way to go in there and do that. And then this line right here is both using the round cap. So if I switch that to the butt cap, for example, those lines become vertical instead of rounded. So it's kind of up to you stylistically what you want to do. But this one has a 15 point dash to begin with. So right here, this one is 15 point with a 15 point gap, and then it's followed by a five point dash shown right here, and a 15 point gap between those. So you can do that up to three times, and then it'll just alternate those perfectly between those three different things. And this one right here is just to show you can make perfect circle dots in case you wanna do those. And the way you do that is a dashed line with a zero point dash, and then you can specify the gap to be as long as you want it to be. So I'll make this 20 to make this even longer between these. But the important thing to make this actually look like dots and not just vertical lines lines kind of like this that are super skinny is you want to select a round cap which will convert that zero point vertical line that's just kind of like a invisible path almost you can see a little hint of it there but that's sort of a visual bug as soon as you turn that into a round cap you can see that it makes a circle that is super helpful for dividing lines or even something like a little dotted line to cut out stuff or stuff like that and if you increase the stroke weight these dots become bigger so that's a really cool thing about the stroke window that you might not know about just looking at it because it might not be totally intuitive for you to do so, but you can do that in here and it is fairly easy to do. So below that, I'm just gonna show this off pretty quick. It's not a thing that you'll use a ton, but it is helpful to know. You can add in arrowheads to lines. So if you hit one of these drop down menus, it'll bring up a selection of, in this case, 39 different arrow points that you can then apply to the end points of a line. So you can go ahead and select these as you see fit. And the one on the left will apply to the left side of that line. And the one on the right will apply to the right side of that line. And you can use different arrowheads for these two different
different things if that's something you want to do. As you can tell, it's pretty easy to do that. And then there's a scale option below that that lets you basically decide how big you want these arrowheads to be. So it's defaulted to 100%, which oftentimes looks super big. So I could enter in something like 50% here and hit enter. And as you can tell, a little pointing finger got a lot smaller. Alternatively, you can make it way bigger and do something like 200%. It's up to you how you wanna end up scaling these, but you can scale them independently if you want to, but feel free to scale the arrowhead size however you think looks best for the line you're doing. And also something a note on this the arrowhead size is combined with the overall weight of the stroke so as i make the stroke bigger the arrowheads get bigger so make sure you have your stroke size pretty well set before you add in the arrowheads otherwise you might end up with a pretty weird issue like this where you have this giant pointing finger that doesn't make sense for the size of the line but you can always go in there and change the size of that to be something different if you want it to be that way in this case it ends up looking like a finger pointing on the end of a super long arm but i guess that's pretty cool because it shows the power of using the scale option here and on this one right here, I just applied a profile, which was a bunch of different built-in default profiles for stroked lines. So you can just hit this down arrow and uniform like this one right here is always the default. But you can just go down this drop down menu right here and select a few different presets that you can go ahead and use in case you wanna use one of these because it fills the needs of whatever kind of look you're going for. And there's a little button to the right of it called flip along that you can hit, which will basically flip the orientation of this profile on that line. So if you do a lot of illustrative work, then this might come in handy for you or if you're just trying to get a shape down and one of these happens to fit it really well then just feel free to use these until you get the look that you're trying to get so right here this is the last thing i'm going to cover right here and it's not an option you'll have to worry about using too much but it's this limit right here where it says 10x so if i zoom in really quick and look at these two different things they're the exact same stroke weight of nine point and they have all the same options selected but as you can tell this one has this shape kind of protruding above the top as well as the miter joins right here are much longer where on this one right here, the joins basically cap off. So this one doesn't have these extending beyond it. And that's because the miter limit or just limit right here is 15. And this one right here is two. So if you ever have a problem where this happens, where it is actually cutting off before you think it should, just try gradually increasing the number until it gets to a point where they show up. Alternatively, if stuff is protruding out and it looks kind of broken or strange, just gradually lower this number until you eventually get it to a point where it doesn't end up doing that it'll typically involve some just trial and error like i did right here but eventually you'll find a number that looks good for what you're trying to achieve and then feel free to just go with that it's pretty rare that you'll have to do that but it happens most on paths where you have some pretty steep angles that intersect with each other fairly quickly but that about covers it for this tutorial hopefully it was helpful if you're trying to get a better feel of the stroke window it's something that you can perhaps pretty easily overlook because by default those options aren't available to see which really high a lot of the potential of the window itself but once you know what's there and what you can select and change it's actually really easy to go in there and make a lot of really cool changes so that's it for this tutorial i do hope you found it helpful and if you did please like and favorite and if you want to see more tutorials just like this feel free to subscribe i do my best to keep new content just like this coming for illustrators and designers thanks for watching